Good day, everyone. I'm your host, Lee Judge, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Omnichannel, Hype or Reality, brought to you by Jakarta. Our presenter today is Kate Leggett, Principal Analyst at Forrester Research. Kate will discuss the growing trend of customers demanding access to your organization in an effortless way via multiple touch points, and also take a look at the cost of not delivering an omni-channel experience. Also with us today is Steve Herlocker, Jakarta CMO. Prior to our Q&A session, Steve will briefly cover how Jakarta can assist you in starting an omni-channel strategy. Again, for the presentation, there will be a Q&A session, so please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A window at any time. Also, as a note, to protect, the, to protect the privacy of our attendees, only your name will appear in the attendee window. So let's begin. The presentation is all yours, Kate. Hey, thanks, Lee. And thanks to all of you on the phone this morning, uh, taking an hour out of your busy days to listen to me and to Chicada talk about omni-channel experiences. And on this webinar, I'm going to explain why you should care about providing this omni-channel experience, a consistent experience across communication channels, and why it's important to be able to support your customers as they want to start a conversation, an interaction on one communication channel, and then be able to continue it on another communication channel without having to restart the conversation. So, Let's start off by looking at what type of behavior customers or consumers expect um, from the interactions with companies that they engage with to do business with. So, a um, little cute picture that says that customers want to engage with companies on their terms when they want to, and where they want. And I'm sure you as consumers, you can all relate to this. But let's get a little bit more factual. One, one of the, um, the joys of working at Forrester is that we have access to thousands and thousands of data points. And here's some data that I will share with you. Um, in our North American Technographics um, Customer Experience Survey, that's a, um, a summary of more than 10,000 data points. Our data shows that 52% of consumers say that they are likely to abandon an online purchase if they can't find a quick answer to their question. Another data point says that 71% of consumers agree that valuing your time is the most important thing that a company can do to provide them with good customer service. So this shows how important it is to provide cons um, frictionless, easy um, experiences or interactions um, with companies. And this frictionless uh, type of interaction is measured as a customer effort score. And then customer effort is a key component to Forrester's Customer Experience Index, which measures the experience, the customer experience that customers have with brands that they interact with. And for the last six years, we've been, me we've been measuring the customer experience that over 160 brands in 40 verticals deliver by asking three very basic questions. Um, how useful was the interaction? Again, effort. How easy was the company to do business with? And lastly, how enjoyable was the interaction? <laughs> and our data from this year, which doesn't differ significantly from the data that we've been collecting over the last six years, and you can find all this data up on our site, is that we find that just a third of brands deliver experiences, positive experiences, experiences that are in line with expectations. And the takeaway here is that most interactions with companies, whether it's sales or marketing or customer service, take effort. 
um, are not frictionless, do not align with customer uh, expectations. And then these interactions are obviously not always useful and not always enjoyable. Hmm. So along with effortless interactions, consumers uh, like you all on the phone also want to use a range of communication channels when interacting with the companies that they do business with. So there's a lot of data on the screen. The dark blue lines show the communication channels that consumers have used in the last year to, uh, to, to interact with a customer service organization. The light blue lines is the same data that we took in, in December of 2009. So you're looking at two data points three years apart. So what you find here is that the phone is still the most used channel at 73%, but it's very quickly followed by the online channels, the help, frequently asked questions, email, chat. What you also see is that there has been a shift in communication channels in the last three years. So the phone uh, usage has remained consistent. But look at what the online channel has done. It's jumped from 57% to 67%. Look at chat. Chat has gone from 30 to 43%. And Twitter, as an emerging channel for customer service, has gone from 11 to 22%. And there's also communication channels that we reported in December of 2012, screen sharing virtual agents, SMS, click to call, that were not on our radar, <coughs> excuse me, three years ago. Um, but they are significantly used in December of 2012 when we took the, uh, the survey data. So what this shows is that customers, consumers today, want to use a broad array of communication channels. The, the number of communication channels is expanding. It's not contracting. And the number and importance or the number of conversations that, uh, that, that consumers want to have on one channel versus another channel does change year over year. So you, um, as um, a representative of your company need to understand what communication channels are important to your customers and know and be able to offer those communication channels to your customers so they can do business with, with you. And you have to offer them in a way to provide seamless, efficient, effortless interactions so that the, inter the quality of the interaction meets the um, expectations of your customers. So companies know that consumers want to use a range of channels. And many companies have already deployed <clears throat> a breadth of channels. And this, the, the, this number of channels that are deployed is driven in part by cost control measures because channels that are alternative to voice cost a fraction of what the phone channel costs. Uh, so in this data, we show that web self-service is, again, um, several orders of magnitude less expensive than a live agent interaction with a call center agent. And, and then if you look at the, um, the cost differential between a uh, technical support agent, it's even larger. But we know that using um, a variety of communication channels is not equally effortless. And this ends up impacting their satisfaction ratings. And what you're looking at on the screen, again, this is data that Forrester uh, collected in December of last year, are the satisfaction ratings of customers as they, um, as they uh, do business with companies over the different communication channels. And at the top, you see the live assist channels. This is where the end user is actually connected to a live agent. Um, phone or chat are the two top ones. So these live assist channels provide the most effortless communications, and they have the highest satisfaction ratings. And then you look at the bottom 
um, where you see like web self service it, it, it help or frequently asked questions in this uh, data set. You think that this channel should be effortless. You think, for example, virtual agents, which is dead last in our survey, you think this channel should be effortless. But they have lo these channels have lower satisfaction ratings than the live assist channels. And this is not a uh, comment on the technology. It's more the case that in many cases, the content that's provided on these channels is not aligned with what customers demand. So it's not only a matter of technology, it's also following best practices, in this case, to keep content aligned with customer uh, needs. So why do you care about providing this type of effortless interaction? And it's because consumers, like, like everyone on the phone today, um, if you don't get the quality of service that you demand, you're going to complain about it. And in our survey, it shows that you're going to tell your friends or family about a poor service interaction. You'll take a survey. You'll call the company. You'll send an email to the company. You'll chat with a company representative online. And in the world of social media that we live in, these disappointments end up getting quickly amplified and this amplification of negative sentiments about a company, about a brand, can end up eroding a company's reputation. And in an attempt to quantify the impact of uh, negative sentiments uh, via social technology, um, I, I want to quickly talk to you about our uh, social technographics ladder. And this shows how users interact with social media. On the left side of the um, of the ladder, you've got uh, B to C numbers. On the right hand side of the number, you, uh, right hand side of the ladder, you've got B to B numbers. So look at the top box. It says creators. These are the folks, the users that are actually creating content. Uh, they're tweeting about a poor service experience. They're negatively rating you, reviewing you. They're blogging about a poor service experience. Uh, they got a Facebook post about a poor service experience. In the B2C world, it's 23%. In the B2B world, it's 32%. But the damage is done in the second um, red box called spectators. These are the folks who are actually reading the negative <clears throat> reviews and ratings and tweets and posts. In the B2C world, it's 68%. But in the B2B world, it's a whopping 80%. So again, this is just a way to characterize the reach of negative comments as, um, as they are amplified by social media. So let, we know that customers want effortless service. We also know our data shows that they want to use a broad number of channels. But this isn't it. Let, 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 let's take a step back and think about the type of interactions that customers actually want. And this is a, a an extreme example, but it showcases four points that customers want. They want to use a breadth of channels. In this picture, I've got forums, I've got Facebook, I've got a website, tweet, a phone, IVR. They want to be able to start a conversation on one channel, say email, and continue it on another channel, say the phone channel, seamlessly without having to restart the conversation with all their data, all their information passed to the agent. They also want the same data, the same information, every time that they contact you, whether it's by email, by chat, over the online channels, by phone. And they, lastly, they want the agent to know who they are, what their uh, past purchases have been, what their interactions, past interactions have been, so that the agent can personalize the interaction to their particular situation. And this is a lot harder than it seems. In most cases, a, company's, a, a customer's journey ends up being fractured. A customer is constrained to start an interaction in one channel and end it in that channel. And there's no way to start an interaction in one channel and seamlessly continue it on another without having to restart the conversation over again. And this fractured experience 
ends up being costly. So again, here's some more data points for you. Um, it shows that in our survey, um, if uh, three quarters of consumers moved to another channel when online customer service failed. So think about looking for an answer online or looking at the status of the, your open service request and not being able to find the information that you're looking for. Uh, here it shows that 35% uh, of, con uh, uh, of consumers that were unable to find what they were looking for picked up the phone and called a service rep. Not only is this uh, um, frustrating to the customer, but the phone is a much more expensive channel, obviously, than the online channel. 17% ended up picking up the phone and doing business with another company. 17% gave up altogether. Uh, so again, the cost of not being able to provide this effortless service to customers ends up being very costly to companies. And what you can do is Forrester has these ROI models that help quantify the impacts of poor customer service. So digging into this ROI model a little bit more, consider, um, for example, a failed website interaction. And what you can do is you can plug in your own numbers into this calculator, but you can look at the number of site visits, the conversion rate, the average order value, a checkout conversion rate, and you can quickly calculate the revenue that's lost to competitors and to abandoned purchases by not being able to support your customers in a good, in this case, an online interaction. So why is this the case? Why, do com why cannot companies not provide this a, a service experience in line with customer expectations? Well, let's dig under the hood. In most companies, and um, the, the IT ecosystem is a mess of disconnected technology. So what you're looking at here is actually the technology ecosystem of a large North American uh, telecommunications provider. And in this case, these, uh, these um, customer service agents have to use over 40 different applications over the course of the workday to be able to service customers. And so what they're doing is they're hunting and pecking through all these different systems for the right information to be able to present to their customers. And it's no wonder that different agents follow different processes and procedures to help customers. And customers are getting different experiences um, because their agents are following different processes, but as importantly, they may also end up getting different answers because the data and information in all these different systems may not end up being in line um, w w w with uh, one another. Um, what's also interesting is that many companies um, haven't tied their interaction channels together. For example, email chat, online web self-service email chat, um, online self-service phone, um, just a couple examples. Um, and our recent survey data is showing that only 35% of companies are actually planning on doing any type of multi-channel integration in the next 12 months, and this is still a fairly no, low number. So the other problem is, is that your customer service agents don't have access to a universal customer history. These are the, all the details of all the interactions that a customer has had with you over all the channels that you end up supporting. And what this customer history does, it allows an agent to understand what has been communicated to the customer in the past and to try to build on that knowledge and on that relationship. And then there's also the problem in many companies um, of social media. Um, so customers, uh, your customers started expressing opinions, asking questions over social media, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, um, like, like, like Twitter. Um, or they ended up like creating videos about their experiences and posting them on YouTube. So companies have been forced 
to address these social inquiries because if they did, they would end up um, eroding their brand. But in many companies, ad adopting social media technologies was, was done typically um, in, a, in a very reactive way, uh, not in a way that helped augment and extend the value of customer service uh, organizations. And what happened in many cases is that these social technologies were um, added in a silo, um, disconnected from the rest of the um, customer service or contact center ecosystem. And more often than not, they were staffed by marketers or even worse, PR folks and not customer service agents. And then these channels started being seen as backdoor entryways into customer service organizations, bypassing all the established SLAs and and processes that um, had already been communicated to to customers. Um, and of course, uh, the, the folks answering these social media inquiries were overwhelmed at times by the number of um, inquiries that they got, couldn't respond to all of them, and that uh, helped uh, um, propagate the dissatisfaction of their customer base. So the other issue that companies are facing is that you, think about how you deal with a company or view a company. You view the company as an entity. You don't say, hey, because I'm engaged in a sales process, I'm going to have a different type of interaction than if I'm doing customer service with them. C customers, um, like, like yourself, you expect these consistent experiences through the life cycle of engagement. Whether you're searching for a product, you're deciding what product to buy, you're buying a product or service from a company, you're learning how to use the product or service that you bought, you're trying to get help from the company, um, you're, you're, um, you, you, you get a marketing materials from the company. You expect the company along the engagement journey whether it's a marketing, sales, or customer service interaction, to provide you with a consistent experience. And, um, and consistent experience over touch points as well, uh, whether it's web, it's a company's website, it's mobile, it's a call center. And think about how your company is structured. You probably have these different silos or functional groups within the company. You've got sales, you've got marketing, you've got customer service. Now think about the processes that these different functional groups use. They're probably pretty different or disconnected unless you're a highly evolved company. And then dig into the data. The data that a salesperson has may not be the same as what a customer service agent has about a particular customer. So again, customers expect this consistent engagement across the life cycle uh, of engagement with a company, but if you look under the hood in a company, it's a very fractured and siloed where, com where different functional organizations aren't sharing data, aren't sharing processes, and it's no wonder that, that customers end up having this type of fractured experience. So what can you do to make it better? First of all, start by asking who your customers are. Um, Different companies will have different types of customers. If you're a youth retail brand, uh, your customers will be of the younger demographic that are uh, deeply engaged in social and online channels. If you're a uh, retail bank that caters to high net worth individuals, it will be an older demographic and the live assist channels like phone and perhaps chat may be of greater importance. So what you want to understand is who are their personas and then how do they want to interact with you. You don't have to deploy all communication channels that are available out there. Um, you, want to be, you want to offer the communication channels that are aligned to your brand and that make sense to a particular customer. And then what you want to do is understand what your customers actually want to do with you. And this we call journey mapping. And what it does is it traces the, the types of interactions that customers want to have with you and the steps that companies have to follow to be able to fulfill an interaction. And then these journeys can be limited to customer service or if you want to get ambitious, it can cross 
marketing, sales, and customer service. What I have on the screen here is a credit card offer, the journey of, uh, of a credit card offer. Getting an offer, um, the customer being approved for the offer, reading the terms and conditions, then using the website to get the new credit card, getting their first bill, et cetera, et cetera. At every step of this journey, you want to look at how effective and efficient that step was in being able to meet your customer's requirements. Was it an enjoyable experience or did you completely miss the providing a good experience? Because perhaps you didn't pass the data from one um, touch point to another touch point. Or perhaps um, the customer service agent who got the call didn't know about the special offer that the marketing department was promoting. So what you want to do is map this customer journey across the different touch points and understand whether it is meeting your customer's expectations, if it's effortless, if it's efficient, if it's enjoyable, if it's useful. And you want to focus on the steps, whether it's a small journey just for customer service or a broader journey, you want to focus on the steps that are not meeting customers' expectations and fix those first. And then, again, in every step of the interaction, look at reducing the effort of your customer accomplishing this task. And this could involve a broad number of things. For example, only presenting content and information that is relevant to the customer's context. For example, if the customer has bought products and services and they do an FAQ search, why can't you use your customer's information to filter the FAQ results to only the products and services that they've ended up buying? Um, or, for example, if the customer contacts a customer service organization and you know who they are, give them a, a, connect them with the right customer service agent who can most effectively and efficiently answer this question. Or, for example, the visual IVRs uh, that help customers quickly navigate a menu to reach the right agent instead of having to listen to all the touch points. So again, there's many different ways of reducing the effort in helping customers achieve their goals. And remember, you want to do this for two reasons. First of all, not meeting customers' expectations is fundamentally costly to your business. And more than that, it causes customer dissatisfaction. And and Greater customer satisfaction means greater customer loyalty. And Forrester has a lot of data that correlates customer loyalty to an increased wallet share of a customer over the lifetime of engagement of that customer with the brand. So better customer in engagement and interactions leads to, correlates to additional revenue from that particular customer. So to circle back, and to the tenant of this webinar, omnichannel, is it hype, is it reality? Um, so we know that an omnichannel experience is important to keep your customers satisfied and loyal to your brand. And again, you want to do this because if you don't, it's going to cost you money. And more than that, your customers aren't going to be satisfied and you're not maximizing the wallet share that you can get from a particular customer um, if you're not providing uh, uh, engagement experiences that are in line with their uh, w w with your their expectations, and so to be able to do this, you need to focus on four main um, uh, issues or, or four uh, main buckets. First of all, is look at your strategy. Look at your company strategy. Make sure that your customer experience your engagement strategy is in line with your company strategy, that you're not running, for example, your contact center as a cost center when your company's strategy is to provide differentiated, personalized customer service, because you can't do that and optimize your cost structure. 
Next, you want to understand who your customers are. Again, not every company has the same type of customer. What their personas are. What are the journeys that they want to take with you? And more than that, listen to your customers. Understand what they're saying about your services, about the types of engagement experiences, and use that information to help improve the experiences that you deliver to your customer base. Thirdly, choose technology. And also think about your data management ecosystem, which is a whole discussion onto itself. But choose technology that can support your customers in the way that they want to interact with you today and in the future. For example, choose technology that uh, is able to help support a set of communication channels that you need to deploy today, but choose technology as well that can grow and expand um, into different communication channels um, in the future if you want to stand up new communication channels and um, make sure that this technology is able to be implemented in a way that is deeply integrated um, so, that uh, so that communication channels like my social media example isn't stood up in a silo onto its own disconnected from, from the rest of the ecosystem. Um, as well, look at the technology that offers you the, uh, that's able to support the types of interactions you want to give to your customers, these simple, effortless interactions. And then, fourthly, uh, focus on your culture um, and ensure that it is customer centric. And no discussion cannot involve culture it is one of the most overlooked areas in providing good customer experiences to your, to your customers. Ensure that the customer-centric culture is driven from the top, but that infuses and embeds in every, um, in every action that customer-facing personnel have with their customers. And this includes your hiring policies, your rewards and recognition policies. Because at the end of the day, your customer-facing um, employees, your customer service agents, are the most important part of your business and are able to make or break interactions. But again, it's a focus on strategy, on understanding your customers, choosing the right technology, and as well, a deep focus on culture. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Steve Herlocker from Chicago, and he'll take it from here. Okay, actually, Kate, let me say one thing. This is Lee again. Um, well, thank you, first of all, Kate, for your valuable insights on omnichannel customer service. Um, we're going to get to our Q&A session in a moment, but first, we're going to pass it over to Steve Herlocker, Jakarta CMO, to share some solutions on how you can implement an omnichannel strategy. Here you go, Steve. Yep, thank you, Lee, and thank you, Kate. Um, so agreed, Kate. Certainly the, the customer effort that it takes to get through um, a journey is, is key to the success of a business. Quickly, I'll tend to spend just a few minutes talking about Chicago's experience in this space. And really, so for over 20 years, we've been working with a number of brands out there, some of the, some of the marquee brands that have some of the most complex interactions they have to deal with, whether that's telco, banking, insurance, retail, travel and leisure and hospitality. And in these spaces, you know, we're lucky enough to talk to a number of senior executives there and program teams that struggle with these issues every day. And for 20 years, we've been helping them solve these problems. Jakarta is focused entirely on simplifying and taking the effort out of that interaction, making it easier, making it useful to the end user. So, you know, the way we look at this challenge um, is very similar to the way Kate sees it. And that is that really companies who are structured around different organizational silos have created processes and they've created implementations for all these different customer touch points that are very fragmented. The customer reaches out and touches you on one channel and they have a certain offer that's provided to them or they have um, a discount that's offered. They have a customer service policy that's enforced. And that may be different. If they stop and they need to start in another channel, they have to start over, and they may get different answers in that environment. It creates fragmentation. Um, it creates huge challenges. And I think Kate talked very well about both the organizational challenges behind that and the system challenges behind that. Um, the good news is you talk about whether uh, omnichannel is hyper-reality. 
we see that a number of organizations, and we, we have the, the good luck to talk to a number of them, uh, are really structuring the processes in the organization around this. The people have gone to customer journey mapping. People are identifying the core pain points. The key now is how do I start to implement those journeys and how do I start to take some of the complexity out of that interaction. So Jakarta's approach to this is really starting is saying let's improve those, those highly high friction points across the different touch points. Let's start with the ones that really don't work well. We'll make sure that there is an enjoyable experience there, there's a useful experience there, there's an easy experience there. And then once we've solved that problem in one environment, start to introduce that and take it across the different channels, ensuring that it's, it's continuous. Um, in other words, I can start with, uh, say, configuring an insurance policy or, or starting a quote, if you will, and that I can then pause that and maybe pick it up on another channel. And then if I need help, I'm not starting over when I go through a chat channel or I call somebody in the call center. I actually just take that process that I was working through, that interaction or that experience, and move it across to the assisted side and continue with it there. So we talk about that in the continuity sense. And then consistency being making sure that you have the same status of an order, you have the same offer, you have the same information available across all of these channels. So again, we tend to say, look, let's take the pieces that are painful where in the journey it is causing you to lose revenue, causing you to lose customers. We'll solve that, make that a simplified and, and uh, excellent experience for the customer, and then we'll project it across the rest of the channels. Our focus on doing that uh, is really doing that with a core platform, um, something that the business can take and really drive and take data out of the organization, drive data into it, build interactions, build content, suggest next actions, put the rules in place that says how you want the customer to engage with you. And again, deploy that maybe in one channel to start, and maybe that's a self-service environment, um, could be a mobile environment, uh, a mobile application, could be your website, could be a social environment. But start that, that journey there, start that engagement on that channel, build it with the platform, and then when you're ready and when the organization is ready, they've mapped it out, when the infrastructure in the other channels is ready, use that common platform and start to introduce that experience across those different environments. And again, keep it connected so that when people change across different channels, they get that consistent experience. So I just wanted to spend five minutes on Jakarta, how we see that problem, how we come about solving that problem, and really answering the question, do we feel it's hyper-reality? It is reality in the sense that customers are demanding it and businesses have to address it, but it is growing and implementing towards reality. It's not hype, but it's not there today because many companies are just not in a position to move directly to omni-channel. So we're suggesting, just as Kate did, bite off the pieces that are most important and then take a step-by-step -step approach to solving that and having a, a, you know, a multi-stage a multi or a multi-phase journey to get to that full multi-channel interaction. So I just wanted to give you a few minutes about Jakarta. Really today was about Kate and making sure she gave you the data you need to help plan that, that omni-channel experience and make your customer journeys better, make your companies more successful. Just wanted to tie that back to Jakarta and what we do. We would love to talk to you if you, would, if you have interest about how to move forward with this kind of engagement with us. With that, I'll hand it back to Lee and we'll go through the Q&A. Okay, thank you, Steve. And we have several questions that are in the Q&A window, also a few in the chat. So I'll read those to uh, you, Steve and Kate, and let you answer those uh, accordingly. Uh, let's see, and the ones we can't uh, respond to now, we actually will respond to you via email after the event so we can uh, let you get back to your work day and respect your time. All right, the first question is, we have old legacy systems, they say. How can we integrate all the data in this disparate system to give single view, give a single view of the customer to make sure we give customers the best experience and not have to repeat themselves if they start with one channel and switch? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, what I would do, like Steve said, like I said, is understand, first of all, what interactions your customers are taking with you um, and the channels that they are bridging. Uh, for example, are they starting via email and then picking up the phone? Are they starting online and then picking up um, uh, and then chatting with you, for example? What are the main interaction types? And then um, look at the consistency of data across the main interaction types and across 
these channel shifts and see if you can clean up those processes and that data first. And it may not be deeply integrating. It may be just being able to present the agent um, the right sets of data that could reside in another system. Um, it could be trying to unify business processes across different channels. So it may not be an integration. It may not be a data problem. But dig into the pieces of data that are needed for that particular high frequency interaction um, and look at the quality of that data for that interaction and see what it takes to clean it up. Uh, and do it in a very systematic way. Um, and focus on the major pain points first. And it, it, it's a huge project um, that will end up um, taking time. But if you do it in a very incremental way and focus on the high frequency interactions, you should be able to get uh, to, to be able to justify those projects uh, with simple ROI calculations, and you should be able to see some of your SAS scores increasing fairly quickly um, if you have very broken processes. Okay. I don't know, Steve, if you want to add anything. Uh, just briefly, I would add, uh, I've also seen, I completely agree with Kate, I would add one more dynamic to that in the sense that I've seen reasons that businesses have this challenge. Um, that can vary. So for example, an e-commerce that started as a brick and mortar probably has a completely disconnected e-commerce operation from the store experience. And that's going to drive a different set of priorities that are around, the, just as Kate had said, the interaction channels and making sure that the customer experience in the store is consistent with what happens in the e-commerce support and on the e-commerce website. And there, you're looking at the process and the access to very specific pieces of data about products and, and order statuses and those things. Um, so there, you probably would start with that as your first both touch points and pieces of the journey. Um, whereas other companies I've seen, say insurance companies that have grown through acquisition, may have seven different policy, ten different policy systems. They have households that have multiple policies in different systems. And that's a universal problem across all touch points because now I have a problem of who is my customer really and where are they. And so that becomes more of a probably an IT type of project that is more systemically getting access to and building a view of who that customer is and then presenting that back up across the channels. So Kate's absolutely right in terms of the approach. I think just based on where your business starts, it's really going to drive where those priorities start with as well, both from the customer view but also a little bit from the reality of where the business is. Okay, great. Thank you, Steve and Kate. We're going to try to fit in about three more questions uh, to keep our uh, event in within our time frame. The next question is, how would I sell this internally to my organization? No one can doubt that omnichannel and customer experience is important, but so many companies are focused on lowering costs. How do I recommend we initiate a project like this? Well, these projects end up um, having gains in cost uh, being less expensive to uh, omnichannel services that's expensive to a company. It also increases customer satisfaction. Um, in one of my slides, I had an ROI model that you could use to be able to quantify the cost of a failed interaction that starts online and then moves to the phone. You can use ROI calculators like this that present cost numbers that are very, or at cost savings and the cost of not supporting your customers in the way that um, throughout their engagement journey. Um, and these, these ROI calculations um, are instrumental in building a solid business case. So again, it's, uh, it's harder to quantify customer satisfaction and increase customer satisfaction. In a business case, I would really focus on the, co uh, the, the cost structure. Okay. I have a question I think is uh, directed towards you, Steve. Uh, they ask, in your last slide, you show visual IVR web and mobile self-service. So could you please explain if this is more related to the technology or is it more a question of best practice and providing a, a human touch to implementation? 
Well, it's both. Uh, so that slide was a technology slide in terms of how we address uh, getting to omni-channel and that there's basically an ability to create an experience for a customer and then push that out to a channel or quote-unquote render it out to different channels. But it is a best practice as well because we do talk about utilizing the experience natively in the device or the environment that the customer is trying to reach you. So if they're in social and they're on Facebook, that experience should feel like it's a Facebook experience. If they're on mobile, it may be inside the mobile app, it may be mobile web, but it should utilize controls and look and feel like a mobile application. So it's both. We do recommend to people that when you do engage with technologies that help you across this multiple touch point or omni-channel problem, that you do it in such a way that technology is smart enough to give the customer a good experience in each of those, those views. So it's a little bit of both, but that was primarily technology oriented. Okay. I think this last question, Kate, was uh, referring to your portion of the presentation. Uh, they say your presentation clearly highlighted the importance of customer experience, made all the more difficult because of the channels, but what percentage of companies today do you think are focusing on the omni-channel experience and over the next three years? Um, I actually don't have that data point uh, in front of me. I would say end-to-end um, -end omni-channel experience, very few, but focusing on the, uh, the, re the, the processes that are broken and have a big impact on customer satisfaction and that are very costly to, to, to the company. Many companies that I speak with are focusing on selectively fixing certain broken touch points. Okay, great. Well, we want to let you get back to your busy schedules today. So thanks again to Kate Leggett of Forrester Research and Steve Herlocker of Jakarta. This concludes our webinar, Omnichannel, Hype or Reality. If there are any questions that we were unable to answer during today's session, we will respond to you directly after the event. We hope you've gained valuable insight into providing a consistent customer experience across all your channels. A replay of the event will be available soon on jakarta.com. If you'd like a copy of the slide decks, please email me directly at ljudge at jakarta.com. Once again, thank you for attending today, and please visit us again at jakarta.com. Have a wonderful day.